All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to uh, the GKC show. Uh, I'm Mark Lombardi, joined again with Sam Whitaker, uh, and then we also have another guest from the H Bar Foundation. Sam, would you like to introduce? Yeah, our... thanks, Mark. Yeah. So uh, obviously, at NFT NYC, uh, yeah. this is our first on location uh, podcast, so that's exciting. Um, and we're going to talk about a lot of like NFT.com stuff, but I just happened to uh, see Cole and I pulled him over. Uh, this is kind of the, one of the really coolest things about this conference and places like this is just the people you meet. Uh, so Cole is from the HBAR Foundation. For those of you who don't know, the HBAR Foundation is a separate entity from Hedera, but it exists to fund and promote projects on the Hedera network in order to grow Hedera. I know a lot of people from NFT.com um, management, as well as a lot of us are Hedarians. Um, I'm launching G's Nuts on Hedera, um, as a lot of you know. And um, so, uh, yeah, it's cool. I thought I'd just bring him over for a quick hit. He could talk a little bit about the, bit about the foundation and opportunities. I know a lot of you out there are developing, um, a lot of you in our community are developing projects. And uh, HBAR Foundation is a great place to go to kind of help get off the ground. And take away. Sure. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that we have two separate entities. We have the H, uh, Hedera LLC, now called Swirls Labs, um, which is in charge of maintaining our actual hash graph chain. And then we have the uh, HBAR Foundation, which I work for, where we provide funding, liquidity, and support for uh, startups and large organizations trying to get off the ground building projects on Hedera. Um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting. A lot, a lot of people get a little confused when they hear about the two organizations. Um, so uh, just spreading awareness about what we do and how we can provide support for smaller projects and um, larger corporate partnerships as well. Yeah, and I think we're like we're all a part of the NFT.com and the Genesis Key community, um, and a lot of us are, are are know that you know they've talked about chain agnosticity. Is agnosticity one? Sure. Agnosticness. It is now. They're going to be chain <laughs> agnostic. Uh, so even though everything's launched on ETH, uh, you know Solana and, and Hedera are going to come down the pipeline, and it's exciting for everybody that we'll be able to list and show and buy and sell our. Um, the, you know NFTs from um, many different chains, uh, Hedera being one. I I'm a huge Hedera fan because of the Hashgraph technology, which is actually carbon negative, so that's incredible and um, and unique in the DLT world. Um, and uh, yeah, but it's cool that there's a lot of opportunities. And one of the best things about this conference is everybody's so collaborative. Yes. And it's if you're you have competing competing projects on one chain, you're hyping each other. If you're on, you know, the Solana, the Avalanche, and the Hedera people are all looking to um, hype each other and pump each other up because everybody knows that, like, it's about growing the ecosystem at this point. We can uh, talk all we want about we want this project to be successful. One project's not going to get it done. Two projects aren't going to get it done. We have to get mainstream adoption and we have to get it out to as many people as possible, and that's going to take everybody working together. And it's so cool at this conference to have that feel and have that feel that we are all in it together. And then when we come back next year, there's, uh, you know, 700,000 people or who, however many who have interacted with an NFT now will be hopefully 7 million. And then the year after that will be just an exponential growth. Yeah. So it's a really cool space to be in. And any chance you guys get to work with other projects and check out other projects, check out Hedera, check out um, other stuff, it's, it's going to help everybody. So Cole, what's the, what's the overall temperature of, of the room for NFTs and, and the space regarding Hedera? How are you sure. seeing, obviously there, there was big advertisements in Times Square for uh, that were done by Hedera. I would imagine that's partially funded by the HBAR Foundation? Yep, yeah, absolutely. So um, the temperature I would say is white hot. Um, yeah. The growth is... 71. It's, it's, I'd, say it's, I'd say it's in the 90s, if not over 100. I'd say the growth is, is uh, accelerating quickly. Um, when I joined the foundation last year, we didn't have a lot of these tools and marketplaces uh, at, at the same scale that they are now. So it's really interesting to see the, um, the different companies like Hash Axis grow and, and uh, build their product out more mm -hmm. and um, be able to provide minting platforms for artists and make it very easy for really anyone to just make their NFT on, on Hedera. Uh, that didn't exist just a few months ago, so the temperature is white hot, and it's it's getting even hotter. The growth is accelerating faster than I've ever seen it. And now the the foundation also works with Hashport as well. Am I am I correct? They are a client of 
of the foundations? Right, yeah, they've received a grant from us. I think that might have been before my time, but we are working with them uh, very closely on developing some very interesting products that I don't think we can talk about quite yet. Um, right. But, uh, We're familiar with that in the NFT.com community. Don't worry. Yeah. So, so yeah. I see, I see that as one of the key pieces of infrastructure in order to, to Absolutely. have a bridge between at least Hedera and Ethereum. But I think that it'll also have open interoperability up with a bunch of different platforms. So I think it'll be a key piece of technology just in the space as a whole. That's the gold. That's the golden arrow, or whatever you want to call it, uh, silver bullet. Like having that, and everybody's talking about that. Literally, everyone's yeah. talking about okay. who's That's cool. doing, who's doing bridging. We yeah. need bridging. We need to be able to. The biggest piece is securely communicate across platforms. So the hash graph can talk to this blockchain and that and. That's that's going to change everything because it's going to really make it truly make it one community, as opposed to all of these individual projects that are working towards the same goal. But at that point, we can just blow it out of the water. And then, yeah. so so Sam, you tell me. I saw on Twitter that you uh, you sat in on a panel. T tell me a little about what, <laughs> yes. what happened there. Oh. You, did uh, uh, did so, Jordan get uh, sick or? <laughs> okay, so we'll get into that. But I think we'll get into the NFT.com stuff. So I know Cole wants to get back to the booth. Okay, so I'm sorry. Thanks so much for coming Thank over. You. Thanks yeah, for joining us, Cole. Appreciate it. Thank you, Sam. Um, nice to meet you, Mark. Yeah, and check out the H4 Foundation. And, um, you know, you can just call, um, is it Cole Enright? Right? Yeah, Cole Enright. And reach out to me, Cole, at hbar.fund. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter. You can find me. Cool. Yeah, so if you have a project or, like, if you, you know, there's a process for Going through applications for a grant, um, they have a fast track process as well for smaller grants. Mm -hmm. So if you're just looking for, you know, a few thousand dollars to get some marketing off the ground, things like that, um, there's they're they're looking to fund projects that are going to bring um, <laughs> users to there. So That's something huge. to look out for. But yeah, thanks again for coming by. I'll stop by the um, booth and see you guys. Awesome. I'll see you all at the awesome. booth. Thanks, right. Cole. I'll see y'all. Thanks, Cole. Take care. All right. So I'm going to try to put my AirPods in to see if I can get rid of a little bit of this right. feedback. Probably should have tested this. Can That's you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't think they're connected. But... <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, yeah, yesterday um, Jordan was supposed to give a talk on um, I forget the uh, title now. It was uh, creators owning their own content, essentially. Okay. In the uh, web three world, and um, so I. I was getting ready to go over the talk. I knew he was speaking, so I sent out on the Discord, uh, hey, Alec, is uh, is Jordan still speaking at 245? And um, Alec was like, oh, yeah, about that. Jordan had to leave town. <laughs> so um, so I went over, and I happened to know the MC, uh, a guy named Ian, who was running uh, things over at Town Hall. And uh, he was like, well, do you want to step in? I was like, yeah, sure. sure. So, uh, <laughs> so I think I'm, uh, it was about to, it was 10 minutes. It was a little fireside with another yeah. friend of mine named Ian. Figures. He's, a, a, he's 19 years old. He's now, this is his second year speaking at NFT.com. So he's he's a like young rock star. Um, so he's a friend of mine. And we just kind of sat down and talked about uh, NFT.com and how the DAO is going to be uh, formulated and what we're looking at, um, you know, in terms of how things are going to be administered and um, how we're going to be owners of the company that's going to list our projects and other projects. Um, you know, Jordan likes to say that we're all um, CEOs, and uh, I think you had the yeah. good comment on Twitter. <laughs> he, was, he was joking. Yeah, yeah. Put, put his money where his mouth is. Get in there. Yeah. So, so yeah, just kind of to talk in general. I know we want to get to talking about Wagner, but oh, yeah. talk in general about uh, the conference. It's really amazing. Like I said, the, the big prevailing theme is collaborativity. I'm just making collaboration. Um, there it is. Uh, it's a long week. I know. I can't even imagine. After a yeah. day, after a day, yeah. I was spent. Wagme feels like it was a month and a half ago. Yeah. Um, but everybody's really working together, and there's also a lot of conversations. I saw a talk yesterday. It was actually Logan Paul, who is everybody knows his persona in the um, mm -hmm. you know podcast world and the vines and all that stuff, but. That's how he makes his money. He's actually a really thoughtful guy um, and had some really cool things to say. And he said that one of the things that he's looking at as the um, biggest things that are going to come in the next year are going to be watching DAOs 
evolve. I'm watching DAOs uh, really become, you know, it, it's going to be a lot of growing pains, um, but watching how communities can manage a, uh, an entity, a business, essentially. And a lot of people, everybody talks about Web3, Web3 this, Web3 that, but a lot of the more thoughtful people who are here are saying that, you know, what we really need is like Web 2.5 or Web 2.75. Because pure decentralization, that was, you know, the dream of the early days of uh, distributed ledger technology, but it's not necessarily feasible. It's not, there has to be someone who pays the bills, someone who hires the accountants, someone who hires, goes through the regulatory legal stuff and makes sure that healthcare is plans and a little bit of centralization, a little bit of upper management is necessary. And that's yeah. what well, we have at I look at it like raising a child, right? You don't just take a child and stick them out into the world. You have to grow them and nurture them until they get to the point where they can take care of the, where so in, where they can take care of themselves. And I see a DAO as being the same thing. It needs centralization in order for it to grow, but then when it gets to a certain point, you kind of push it off and let it be autonomous. Definitely. And uh, I think I put on the Discord yesterday, uh, towards the end of the day, I was walking around, most people had cleared out, but there's a company called BitDAO, um, and they are, they're actually the second second largest DAO out there right now, um, and they're kind of like a, a DAO for DAOs, um, and uh, I'm going to try to set up a call, see if we can set up a call for GKC members with them, and just get some thoughts on what's what are some of the pitfalls of the early days of the DAO? What are some of the lessons that they learned in launching a large and successful DAO? Um, and this is the kind of stuff that's really going to have to be driven by us. Like, if we really want to make NFT.com what we want it to be, um, we can't be sitting, I was just talking to Cole about this, like, we can't be sitting around and waiting for Jordan or Alec or Don to say, like, this is the, these are the things you guys need to do. Here's some direction. Like, let's take some initiative. Let's have have some conversations and start to figure out what we want it to be. And then we collaborate with the management team to figure out how to implement it. Um, well, and that was kind of some of the impetus behind this show was to be able to allow people to share their story and their voice in a way that was a little bit uh, more in-depth and in detail than you could come across in a in the GKC lounge. Right, I, we have some great conversations that take place in there, but there's still for me nothing really captures what people have to say, like video and audio. Uh, yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. And you know, the more of these we have, and the more of an opportunity people have to speak and speak about what they, you know, their ambitions for the platform, and also some of their concerns. I mean, it's going to be important to voice them and and get them addressed. Um, but again, it's got to be. We have to be autonomous in a sense and like autonomously ambitious yeah. and that it will it, know, it, taking some initiative. It, it definitely, there needs to be some kind of direction from a central organization because I am involved in another DAO and I won't name them, but some of the difficulty that I've seen is that it was, it was started with that idea that all of the people who are a part of it will carry it forward. But what ends up happening is you have a room full of people who don't know what to do because a lot of people are coming to the DAO for, for guidance with, uh, you know, amongst their peers. But if everybody doesn't really know where to go or there hasn't been some kind of uh, social hierarchy that's been set up already, then nobody really knows what to do and they just stand around and do nothing. And then nobody wants to be there. And it's like a... It's almost like a nightclub, right? Unless there are people there dancing and having a good time. If, if there's just a few people there standing around, that's all that's ever going to happen that night. Yeah, and if you don't have the bartender and the, uh, the DJs, right. then you need the DJ. Right. And, and I think that Jordan and, and, you know, a lot, Alec and a whole bunch of the other team are those DJs that kind of get us doing what we're supposed to be doing. And then once, once we're up and moving and the whole thing's running, then they won't need to be like, Dance, dance, dance. We'll just do it on our own. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, it's it's that collaborative nature um, that's going on here, and it has to happen within our community also. That roll up your sleeves and let's get some work done. Let's schedule some calls and let's um, talk amongst ourselves. Like this is kind of where we see the um, where we see things evolving. Um, and I think you know, taking it back to Wagme, 
which was a blast. Yeah. Uh, I had an amazing awesome. time. By the just so that all the listeners know that that was the first time that Sam and I had met in person, as did yeah. just about everybody who met for the first time in, in the GKC Pretty community. Pretty much, yeah. Um, it was so great to put name, or faces to names. Um, Houdini is much more normal than I expected he would be. Yeah. Like, he's just a cool guy. Like, I, I don't know what I was expecting. He blew away my expectations. It was one of those things where, like, it's like, man, all these people seem so cool, but this is all just a chat online, and they're probably just yeah. losers in real life. And then you meet them in real life, yeah. and you're like, God, you guys are cool. <laughs> I know. Like, I, wa- I walked into the room, and um, I shook Alex's hand. He's like, dude, you got to come over here. Like, here, you could meet Houdini and Blackfisher and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it um, was like instant was best cool. friends. It was awesome. Yeah, because you already have that connection. Like, we have shared things that we're interested in, and um, we've talked a lot about a lot of things. And- mm-hmm. It's, it was really cool to meet everybody, and Jordan gave a great, uh, you know, short speech uh, about where he sees, you know, his guidance for NFT.com, and he's, again, we're, he's not the CEO, he's not in, he's not making all the decisions, um, and that's going to be, a lot of that's going to be up to us, and with guidance from the management team, and it's coming along. I mean, I unfortunately haven't had a chance to look at any of the beta updates, because I've I, did. I feel like I need. Yeah. I feel like I need four of me to do everything I want to do here. It's there are literally thousands of speakers, mm-hmm. and so many booths and so much going on. Like I could stay here for another week and a half. I probably die, but it's I could stay here for another week and a half. Yeah, it's <laughs> a lot. Like it's a moment. lot to take in. Uh, I'm yeah. definitely still unpacking just that one day. And, uh, yeah, and I would absolutely suggest. Like I know a lot of people couldn't make it to this one. Um, again, the travel and things like that. There's going to be um, NFT London in November. Mm-hmm. I think it's November 2nd and 3rd or 3rd and 4th, um, which is from the organizers of NFT NYC. I think it's going to be a little bit smaller because I'm pretty sure that's the first year. Um, but, you know, if you're from Europe and you can make that happen, like these things are so super valuable. Just the people that you meet mm-hmm. and having conversations and, you know, ending up giving an impromptu lecture, <laughs> um, <laughs> whatever it is, it's, it's one of those things in life that, you know, just put yourself out there and you know, good things happen. Um, but yeah, everybody here is obviously really into the NFT community. Um, everybody in the GKC is really into the NFT community and getting to meet all these amazing people who are doing so many amazing projects. Like if you get the chance to go to one of these conferences, do it because it's invaluable. Absolutely valuable. So I, I had another question for you with regards to Wagme because I had stepped outside for a minute and uh and you were coming back in with like a crowd of people <laughs> and I was like, what? So, so i have a few genesis keys yeah. so we had a few, I had a few there were a handful of people let me say that I'll, there were okay. yeah um so a few friends like industry people who um were interested in nft.com and you know they got kind of got to see jordan speak and meet some people um and then uh it was kind of like you know there uh there were a couple very good looking nft late nft ladies who uh, did not have genesis keys and pretty much just walked in and i think everybody yeah. was totally fine with that yeah. um met some really cool people and it's all on um, sam's yeah, key cool. you're getting it done <laughs> you know the these nuts don't mess around no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no it's fun to um i think you know where we talk a lot here about um, introducing more people and getting more mainstream adoption to NFTs in general, mm-hmm. uh, we have to do the same thing with NFT.com and educate and introduce people to our community so that it grows. I mean, we still have a lot of Genesis keys to sell. We have to, um, you know, we have a really cool minimum viable community and a really cool like minimum active community. Um, so many of us, you know, the 30 or 40 of us who are super active on the discords and mm-hmm. all know each other. Um, speaking of which, I totally forgot something last week, which we should have done. Um, DCL Names needs a super shout out for what he did a couple weeks ago. I know he got shouted out from in the Discord, but we should do it too. Somebody got scammed, lost their, uh, it was either key or profile. And he picked it up off the floor on OpenSea. And when he found out about it, he just sent it back to them, oh, which that's was really amazing. Cool. I didn't even so, hear about that. Yes. Well, hopefully now everybody will. So DCL Names, whatever your actual name is, mad props, man. That was a really cool thing to do. Good job. So. Sorry for the side note, but uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but it is a great That's... community. It's a, it's, it's a giving and sharing community, and, and I hope that that continues. I was actually, I wanted to say something in the, in the chat earlier today because it popped into my head that everybody's been so great with each other. 
What do we do when somebody that who's like a real jerk shows up into the, into the lounge and like nobody like they are a GKC holder but they're a jerk? Like, what do we do yeah, about I mean, it and how do we handle it? So I thought like now is a good time to discuss that before that person is actually there. And people don't yeah. have to feel like, oh, are they talking about me? Because right now, everybody in the lounge is awesome. Yeah, you can't have, uh, it's impossible to have a mostly anonymous group that doesn't end up with some trolls. It's going to happen. Right. Uh, that's a good point. And I mean, I think my suggestion and my hope would be that you just kind of ignore them. Like, if someone really wants to bring the heat, don't engage, don't try to get in the conversation and start. Then you get angry and they get angry and it's not going to go anywhere. Um, all you got is two, two people yelling at each other and nobody right. really paying attention. So let's keep it um, positive, keep it collaborative, keep it um, what it's been. And, you know, eventually the trolls will just get tired. So let them wear themselves out and just kind of... Well, and I think, I think our moderators have been very good at moderating, you know, making sure that, specific, you know, if there, people are talking about something that's off topic, that it gets into a, a, a channel that's about off topic stuff. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, yeah, to bring it back, I think it's, it's important to talk about the latest beta update. Like I said, I have, I have no time to look at anything. I got a chance to touch on it a little bit, a little bit today. Uh, it is really, so the metadata I think is the big thing. It's so now you can click on to the NFT within your profile and it brings you onto a page that has the NFT listed and then, you know, where it's listed, what all the metadata is on it. So you can see, doesn't do rarity, I think, yet, but it just lists all the attributes that it finds. Um, but again, those are small. I'm definitely seeing everything start to take shape. It's really cool to see something like this kind of slowly be rolled out in a very methodic and thoughtful way. Um, I already have a piece of feedback. I haven't put it back to the uh, to the team yet, but I noticed that there wasn't a back button on that when you get into the metadata page, so you have to go back on your browser, and then that brings you back an extra step instead of to where you right. just were. Anyway, so, so it's but but it's nice to have small little things like that being picked apart by, by the members, so that it I don't know it's it's gonna feel real cool in a year or so when it's a lot more polished and you and we all have an understanding of how it got to that point right it wasn't just a flip a switch was flipped on one day and all of a sudden everybody had access to this shiny beautiful project you know a lot of time and effort from people who weren't just the you know nft.com team went into making it yeah and it's another it's another instance of rolling up your sleeves and getting getting something done like we as GKC members and as DAO members, like we're, we're helping to test and grow the project because there's only so much for I have a software development background and it's there's only so much you can test and you get it out into like actual user testing, UAT testing, whatever you want to call it. And they come up with stuff that you never would have thought of as a developer. It, and it's valuable because it ends up being things that you have to fix. So we're doing that in house and doing it as a part of our, you know, service to the community. So it's, it's just going to make things go faster. It's going to make things get more of those features get rolled out faster and we can build that robust system that we're, we're all patiently waiting for. So uh, I, I do want to go back to, to wag me, but I do want to shout out really quick that you got a selfie with uh, Snoop Dogg. Take that in selfie with Snoop Dogg. So, so, so did he have so a, a huge crowd that was just following him around and you had no, to get so on the escalator I, before him or? I stepped onto the escalator and I'm writing it up in my own world on my phone and I hear a guy behind me saying, okay, Snoop, it's going to be two more floors. So I was like, that's Snoop Dogg. <laughs> and, um, so two things immediately happened. Like I was like, holy shit, that's Snoop Dogg. The second I, I had the presence of mind to, I, I asked if I could take a selfie. Hey, you mind if I take a selfie? He's like, I can't do a Snoop voice, so I'm not even going to try. But like, yeah, no problem. Dog so I grabbed right. my quick selfie and, um, the third thing that happened is I totally, totally screwed up. I mean, this is my, this is Snoop Dogg and D's nuts. Right. How did I not <laughs> take my shot? How did I not just put it out there and say, this is my project. I think it's really funny. And obviously it's right up your alley. Now is that I, moment. I, Snoop Dogg is obviously going to watch this video and see yeah, this. Of course so this is yeah, your moment so. to tell him what you want to tell him on the escalator. No, what do you I, think of I'm sorry. Nuts? I wish I could have put these nuts out there for you, but I, I blew it. I, and I'm going to regret it till the day I die. I, I, it's, 
I, I have no excuse for myself. That I opportunity, it. that opportunity uh, still exists well. in your future. I think you will, it, it will be manifested. So. That is for sure. <laughs> I <laughs> certainly <laughs> hope so. Um, but yeah, it's cool. There are some like celebrities around and, and doing talks and things like that. Um, so yeah, it's an amazing, uh, amazing place to be. If you guys can make it next year, I strongly suggest it. Yeah. So, so of the, we'll, we'll wrap up in just a few minutes. But uh, so of of your, con- you had a lot of conversations at Wagner, right? It was a great networking opportunity, working the room, that kind of stuff. So, what were your some of your favorite conversations that you had personally in the space? So probably, uh, I mean, obviously the conversations with the community and the conversations with Jordan and Alec and and like the you know, getting to actually see and meet these people. Um, and then some other conversations that actually a, a big thing came out of it. And this is just a great networking opportunity. I met a woman there who, um, she is the, uh, a professor at, um, FIT, the Fashion Institute of Technology here okay. in New York. And she, uh, she's actually had a, um, blockchain course there since like 2018 they're way above ahead of the curve yeah and like so all of these they have designers they have fashion designers they have filmmakers and things like that and the course is completely oversubscribed so they can't even um th- there's really no way for them to to keep up with the demand of these designers who want to be able to monetize what they do um so it kind of came together in the last couple of days i'm actually going to uh give a lecture at uh, fit on uh on distributed ledger so i'm going to take them from like an idea through a white paper or through to actually an h bar foundation grant application That's get it funded cool. actually actually build the process project and then have it uh the proceeds are going to a scholarship fund for the school um but it's it's the the thing about it is it's trying it's all about mass adoption and it's all about more adoption. So if we can introduce these kids who are amazing artists and had to jump through 30 different hoops to get to FIT and introduce them to uh, distributed ledger technology and get a project out there and get them excited. I mean, that's just growing the community. That's putting more stuff out there and having more eyes on it. Um, so any opportunity you guys have, I mean, we're all well-versed in DLT and Web3. So any opportunity you have to talk to people or do a YouTube channel, put some stuff out there, basics or stuff you're interested in, the more content we get out there, the more people we reach, the faster this is going to become what it needs to become and what we want it to become. So it's uh, that was that was a cool experience and something that came out of Wagmeet and, uh, and the conference. So That's awesome. I, uh, I had an opportunity to talk to uh, Andrew Masanto and... He's just amazing. He blows my mind. Like, I was I was really excited to have an opportunity to have a one on one with him. He took a good amount of time to talk to me. Uh, so I, I'm very impressed. There is a certain presence among uh, some of the people who started NFT.com that is it just precedes them. You know, yep. they, yeah. And I think it's important to uh, remind everybody that we did get commitments from Jordan, Alec, Don, yep. uh, Gail, um, at least those four who agreed to come on the uh, podcast for an interview sometime in the future. So we probably, we probably should have said that earlier on because people are probably... There's, it's just like you and me watching it at this point. <laughs> no, I, don't, I, don't, I was just on, uh, actually, hold on a second. I have it up here at GKC Show. We had 47 views. You know, that's awesome. Yeah, 10 fantastic. of those might have been uh, my mother, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other 10. Well, that's the other 10. Uh, but yeah, so we'll definitely be talking to uh, the team members. And I know they're excited to do it, especially mm-hmm. like Don, who's newer to yep. the um, to yeah, the project um, to, to have an opportunity to meet everybody and this is the thing like these F- the, i would say the third most important thing everybody's talking about is community 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 mm-hmm. you cannot have a project that doesn't have a community in web3 you just can't and um the nft.com team has done a really good job of fostering that community and the more visibility we have with each other through the wag meets through um, interaction with discord through this podcast um, it's just going to make us stronger. So I'm, I'm super stoked to um, keep doing this and keep introducing people. And uh, I don't think they'll all be as fun as this one, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it will all go back to our normal. I've already gotten back to my normal life already, so... so <laughs> right. That NFT.com yeah. uh, and NFT NYC high is, is long gone. Or not, I shouldn't say long. Yeah, they don't, I'm still buzzing. It may take me a little... 
it may take me a little longer to decompress, but <laughs> yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, Sam, I think that kind of wraps it up for us today. Uh, again, everybody, thank you for watching who is watching. Uh, people are commenting uh, as well, so keep that up. Ask us questions. Please request to be on the show. Uh, I think we have our guests lined up for next week, which will be uh, Sai from Hedarian Dragons, and, uh, which is a, a really cool project on Hedera. And yeah, so we'll dive into that a little bit next week. And until but then, another cool project on Hedera, Hot of These Nuts. So yes, don't forget about that. Is, yes. this, this is the t shirt I've been wearing all week. I can't tell you the number of people who just came up to me and were like, Dude, that's hilarious. It's awesome. So I'm a little yeah. John Lennon done. <laughs> cool. Well, I hope, I hope, what, do you have a, a launch date as of yet? So it's, it's super small and, um, we're going to do like Which a very one small one. kind of identifiable community launch. Um, so we're doing, I'm literally doing interviews for the launch. Um, so don't worry, you're clear through. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, anybody from TKC who wants it, you know, you're in, I've already talked to you guys. Um, uh, but yeah, it's just building the community. So it'll be within the next month or so. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's fun. Everybody laughs at it. So that's it. So one-to-one -one <laughs> onboarding is time goes on. Yeah. Yep. Cool. So, uh, yeah, but it's great to talk to everybody. I'm so glad I got to meet, uh, those of you that I did and I can't wait till the next wag meet to be here more. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks a lot, Sam. And thank you everybody awesome. for watching and we'll see you next week and in the GKC lounge in between. Thanks Mark. Take care. Take Bye everybody. Bye.